You ever see something, and as long as it's not AI generated, you realize that no matter what the context is behind it, there has to be some sort of inevitable result or reaction, right? I, the, 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 if, if you see a referee, for example, sitting there and he just gets handed a wad of cash by the owner of a football club. I don't really care what the context is behind that. Action needs to be taken, right? I, there, it does not matter what the context is. Action needs to be taken. Because there's certain things that just be just based off the fact that they're happening should be disqualifying, right? They, they just should be. Like I play football manager all the time, right? But if you, if you open a football manager stream... I open a football manager stream and I have the editor open and I'm looking at the potential ability of all of the players on my team. Even if, right, I, I'm in there doing something, that, that's already, that's one of those things that you see and you're just like, ah, doesn't really matter how we got here, but Zealand, what are you doing? Right, like that, it's just, there's, it's an encapsulated singular moment that no matter the context, you just cannot wiggle out of it. And that's what I've been tweeted at today. There is a referee in the Dutch fourth division that might have done the stupidest thing I've ever seen, and then he doubled down. And that person is this guy. We'll get to his name later. Uh, and I was shown this tweet initially. I get tagged and stuff on Twitter, right? And it was in Dutch. I translated it. It says, referee hands out three red cards to the opponent and then shouts champions and stands waving the bowl at the championship party only possible in, you know, tagging people. This is the ref, by the way. The dude rocking up in a weed shirt. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I got nothing against the Mary Jane. I got nothing against the grass. I got nothing against the marijuana or marijuana, depending on where you're from, right? But it's just not the best look to be rocking a shirt, promoting the use of a drug that inhibits perhaps the higher levels of cognitive functioning that would be needed in order to referee a, ba a, you know, a match of football. Now, I know we're in the Netherlands, land of the free, home of the high, but I'm just saying it's probably not the best look overall to begin with, but that's really not the problem here. I just think it's funny he's wearing the shirt because he's about to pull off a successive run of worse looks. Now, I'm warning you this video is loud. I'm going to turn it down because I darn near blew my ears out when I tried to watch it the first time. We'll see how I did here. It's 11 seconds. That's the referee at the championship celebration after the match. <laughs> This guy, this guy does have the appearance of somebody that would absolutely shred a karaoke dance floor three hours after you should have gone home. He does have that look, and he does look like he's about to tear up this karaoke song, whatever song he's singing, but he's also holding the championship trophy and basically the center of attention at the championship party for the winning club of a match that he just refereed. I don't care what the context is. You can't do that. This should never happen. If I was the other team, I would rightfully be utterly and completely furious. This is in the Dutch fourth division. If I had made that clear already. So, I mean, this is at a level that is amateur. Uh, if you go below the Dutch second division, you actually get into amateur divisions. It's rather confusing. I've tried to dive in below the Dutch second division before to make a different Zealandism video, and I think I hit my head on the bottom of the pool and I'm still disoriented. I don't really know what's going on down there, but far as we can figure out, this is in the Dutch second division. It is so ridiculous. I didn't believe the tweet, but then articles started to pop up, like this one from Sport Bible. And the guy's name is Jan Smit. Uh, he was an official from Opmir, and I say was, we're getting to that part. Uh, he took charge of the fourth division match between St. George and SV De Vulcan, which actually ties this in nicely because they've tied in, I believe, one of the clubs in that tweet itself. This is the St. George celebration party. The article makes very clear that the tweet is not over-exaggerating here. He, in fact, did not hand out three red cards. He handed out four red cards in the match between St. George and SV De Vulcan. Right, that means that SV De Vulcan, by the end of the match, if all of those red cards were on the field, which nobody seems to be able to fully clarify right now, they had seven guys on the field, right? Maybe one or two of those players weren't on the field or coaches or whoever got handed a red card wasn't on the field, but then you're still, you're still rocking up with like nine, eight guys on the field by the time you get to the end of the match. On top of that, he added 15 minutes of extra time. And right at the end of those 15 minutes, St. George goalkeeper Dave Lawn scored the eventual winner 
gifting St. George the title, going up against, you know, seven, eight, nine guys on the other team with 15 minutes of extra time. Now, each individual one of these things is not proof of anything, proof of uh, it invested interest, proof, proof of bad refereeing, right? I'm not over here you know, finding an extended highlight package of a match from the fourth division in the Netherlands. If it exists, point me in that direction. I can't find it. Far as I know, this match wasn't even videotaped, let alone televised, right? So this is not something that we're going to be able to review or scrutinize intensely. It's all word of mouth, like we're talking about some legendary player from London in the 1890s, right? But he gave away four red cards. That's a tough look. He also gave 15 minutes of stoppage time. Now, I'm aware if something happens that mandates you to give out four red cards, that is likely to mean that there was some sort of delay during the course of the match and that you need to hand out a significant amount of stoppage time. But 15 minutes of stoppage time is some Qatar World Cup level bullshit, right? That is some nonsense. Now, granted, I did kind of like the stoppage time they were given out at Qatar, but they backed off that really quickly. In 15 minutes, just really reasonably, unless there's like a rainstorm that makes everybody leave the field. It just doesn't make a lot of sense for that to be happening. But all of that is, you know, topped off by the fact that the video is real. That's the referee celebrating with St. George after the match. He allegedly performed the song Guardian Angel by Marco Schuitmaker, which, like, if you're going to perform any song that's a little too on the nose, if you're the referee that just handed out four red cards and 15 minutes of stoppage time to help the team actually win the title in the first place, like, are you the Guardian Angel? It's really trying to send a message, or is this just the most unlucky, you know, uh, the referee of all time? But I'm not even going to go on that side. I, I, I don't care what this guy's excuse is. This is, the dumb, this is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen a referee do, right? And I make a lot of videos about weird or bad calls on the field, but you know what? All those guys that are making weird or bad calls on the field in the Premier League, in La Liga, wherever, right? They're, they're not partying with one of the teams after the match. This dude's legitimately partying with one of the teams. He's, got the, he's 61 years old. This dude has like no awareness of how his actions are going to be perceived by other people. And that becomes clear because of everything that happens after this. Because obviously, fucking obviously, S.V. DeVolken filed a complaint against the referee Schmidt. And in it, they said, the Vulcan board does not consider it useful to discuss Sunday's match in detail and the role of the referee during the match and after the match in public. We just have to judge whether it's normal for a referee to celebrate St. George's deserved championship in an exuberant manner after the match. I mean, honestly, the way this is kind of being billed with the four red cards and the 15 minutes of stoppage time and the goal, it's already, even if those red cards in stoppage time were both justified, you'd feel a little jaded if that had gone against you. So I actually give them a lot of credit for saying that St. George's championship was deserved because they didn't need to include that one qualifying word, but they just wanted to bring attention to him celebrating with the team after the match and saying that it wasn't okay. In the Dutch FA only had one response. This is what I mean when you see this video and you can confirm that it is real, there's only one answer. This guy's never refereeing and he's never refereeing another match again. And why would he? And the Dutch FA agreed they banned him from refereeing on behalf of their organization. That was it. Done. See you later. Obviously. Like, freaking obviously. And they said that they received multiple complaints uh, after the match. So I'm, I'm guessing it wasn't just the club. There were other entities that have the ability to complain that were complaining. And they said this morning, we called Mr. Smith and told him he's no longer allowed to referee matches. We expect a neutral attitude and so on and so on and so forth. But then, unbelievable, like actually unbelievably to me, he responded and it just, I mean, like, look, obviously I'm coming into this from the outside, but I've tried to be pretty unbiased, right? I've tried to provide like a qualified look at the match. Like I haven't seen all the red cards that could have been justified. Like I, I'm assuming that number of red cards, that stoppage time, maybe it's justified. But this video, right, that, this, this video, not only is the karaoke a crime, this is just a crime against the game, right? You can't do this because let me tell you why. Jan Schmidt, because you seem to not know. So I'll just go ahead and tell you, even if every decision you make in the match is the right one, and even if in your heart, in your soul, hand on the Bible or whatever the hell you want to put your hand on, maybe just a, a pipe or something, anything you want, bro. Like I'm, yeah, I'm in, it's 21st century. You got it. Put your hand on it and swear that you're unbiased. It doesn't matter. 
You're celebrating with the winning team. You'll never be able to convince the world, let alone the important people in that world, like the Dutch Federation and the clubs that you're refereeing that aren't St. George, that you are unbiased because you are doing an inherently unbiased thing. Or you're doing an inherently biased thing. Sorry, I forgot how words worked there for a second. This is an inherently biased act. You are celebrating the championship even if you are not actually internally celebrating the championship, even if you are here just to have a good time, maybe one of the guys on the team is your friend, right? You cannot do this because it just looks terrible. And, you know, you need to look at a referee at the start of the match and at least assume that they're going to be unbiased. And nobody on the face of the Dutch Federation can look you in the eye and assume you're going to be unbiased because of what you, you're celebrating with the St. George team. Are you kidding me? But his actual response, right, is I can understand that SV De Vulcan is disappointed with the course of the match. However, in my opinion, the four red cards given were all 100% justified. Even if that's the case, does not matter at all. Literally does not matter at all. And in fact, the, all the credit to SV De Vulcan, that's not what they mentioned in their complaint. They actually almost agree with you here that the red cards were justified. Their issue that they raised is that this is a not, it's not a normal thing. He said, before the match, I'd already been asked by the players from St. George if I wanted to sing a song afterwards. So are we just incriminating ourselves? This is the equivalent of a drug smuggling person saying that, well, you know, before I crossed the border, I was approached about, you know, celebrating on the other side of the border once we got the job done. Like, you know, this is insane. Is that a one-to-one -one metaphor? No, but it kind of, like, it's not as far away as it should be. Okay, he then goes on to further incriminate himself. He says, I have done this several times in the past, including at Spartans, VVS, Grasshoppers, and also in Amsterdam at ASV Arsenal. So you're telling me you've celebrated victories after matches you officiated with four different teams. Well, dude, all I want to do is come up and invite you to sing karaoke at our parade so that you'll tilt the game towards us. Like, I don't know. This is just weird. Like, what do you, you're, you're admitting that they talked to you before the game about singing at their celebration. And then you said you've done this four separate times with teams that you were involved in matches that you officiated. What the hell is this guy on? He added, I said that if they became champions, I would like to sing a song. If, if somebody told me that my referee had told the other team that if they became champions, that he had agreed to sing a song at their parade. I'd be livid. I think completely justifiably. You're just torpedoing any sense that you're an impartial referee of the game. Then he said, during the chorus of the Guardian Angel, so he confirms that's the song he was singing, the ball was pressed into my hands and I held it up, making you a part of the celebration of the title. You realize that, right? But his statement continues. I just have to keep reading his statement because it just blows my mind the lack of self-awareness going on here. He says, the Vulcan, however, did not appreciate this. They just forwarded that video onto the KNVB and filed a complaint. Yeah, like they should have. I wasn't partying with the players at all. Yes, you were. Dude, you were wearing a weed shirt holding up the freaking trophy and singing karaoke of the guardian angel at the parade. If that's not celebrating a trophy right? Then I, I literally don't know what is. Then when I went to the bar and had five beers and just waddled on home the other night, I wasn't at the bar. Me? The bar? Never. I just sang a song and held up the bowl once. That's the only thing. I find it too sad for words that the KNVB is removing me for that reason. It's laughable. No, it's not. This is like the most logical thing an FA has ever done in the history of ever. You saying I just sang a song and held up the bull once is the same as me saying, hey man, I just bobbed my head to the tunes at the bar. Like I was just there, but I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? I was just, I was just there. I was, I was, I was. You see where there's no logic to follow here? K KNVB has not done any research and only watched one video. I assume that the whistling is now over, but I will no longer get on my knees like I did two years ago. They can, uh, then they can go on the beat bridge. I'm assuming that some that insult translates a lot better in Dutch than it does into English. Saying they haven't done the research and watched one video, I'm going to keep it honest. If you're saying that's you in the video, right, and you confirm that video is real, they only have to watch the video, brother. That's all they've got to watch. I mean, I feel like I'm making the same point after every single section of, of, of this entire statement that he released, but this is insane. It is so obvious that this guy should be banned from refereeing in the Netherlands that it's painful. That being said, 
I may recommend a new career path for him. This guy should take up a residency at a karaoke bar. They got a lot of those going on in the Netherlands, and I think this guy would be great at it. It's clearly his calling, because even when he's refereeing a match, it's the only thing he's thinking about. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully this guy's not refing your local league game. If he is, offer him some karaoke. You'll be fine.